Um, all right, hi you guys, welcome back to the SP Mamas podcast. I am your host, Carolina, and today, super excited, we have Julian and Miranda Alcaraz on as my guest. Um, thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I have a confession to make. I know you already know this, but I haven't listened to any of the other episodes. That's okay. I think pretty much only <laughs> me and Nelson. No, I'm scared to listen to other birth stories. Oh, I'm yeah. not in a good space to hear yes. those things Yeah, right now. Totally. And the whole... Like the whole intention of this podcast and just for you guys to know is, um, you know, hearing your story and your experience, obviously, like it's only for you guys. Like it, the things that worked for you may only work for you, but I think that what makes it easier for anyone at any point is just knowing that you're not alone and like just hearing that, I don't know, we all have struggles or, um, things that were like confusing or overwhelming. And I know personally, I learned a lot like from you guys, even just with our struggle with like sleep, getting Callie to sleep Mm -hmm. and then hearing from you guys like, hey, you know what? We just had to do this thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. That helped so much and I didn't feel like so alone. So that's kind of what we're trying to do is just um, connect and hear stories and I mean, Helena, I'm super pumped to have you because you're the first dude on this podcast. I mean, I feel honored to he be the first dude in this podcast. He has to be here. I don't remember it. I was like, yeah. I don't, you have to come because um, my birth story will be so short because <laughs> I think I've blocked it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about like the pregnancy itself and then we'll get into the birth story. And I mean, we're, this is kind of like a unique situation because you guys are expecting your second, obviously, and we have your perspective. So we'll kind of just jump around. But if there's anything that you feel like you really want to add or share or whatever, please let me know. I think that this is like, like I said, I haven't listened to any of the other episodes because I will like put that into my own. This is that that's definitely going to happen to me if it's like a horror story or whatever. But when people used to say, like, oh, I can't wait to hear your birth story after or when I was pregnant with Knox, I was like, birth story? Like, you go into labor, you push the baby out. Like, what is it? How is there a story? I didn't know what that meant. Like, I had and I had never heard a birth story. I didn't listen to any before my first birth. So I definitely think there's like a huge like benefit if you've never given birth before to listen to some of them, because otherwise you just think it is the way that it is on the movies. And it's. Not, <laughs> not mm-hmm. even close. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe for some people it is. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So starting off with the pregnancy, um, tell me about like the experience of discovering that you were pregnant. We're talking about Knox's pregnancy, Knox's. right? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We'll start with. We'll go. We'll go back. We'll come back another day for baby B. Okay. Um, So, yeah, the experience of discovering that you were pregnant, what was your reaction? What was your reaction? And then, like, how did that go down between the two of you? Well, I think during that time, we were going through, like, a relationship struggle. And then it was definitely not a planned pregnancy. And so when we had just moved in together, and I think it was, like, two weeks after we moved in together. A week. A week. Was it a week? Yeah. Okay. It was like a week, whatever, a week or two after we had moved in together, that's when, like, Miranda said, hey, like, I need to show you something. And, you know, she showed me that um, we were pregnant. And it didn't, I mean, it doesn't really click. It's not really, you kind of have this idea, especially being in the acting scene and the acting world, where, like, oh, my God, you're pregnant. Ah, music, warm music, <laughs> melting hearts, you know. But it wasn't like that for us, right? It was just very, like, no. okay. We, All right. Yeah, know. I mean, we were like still deciding if we were gonna like be together, stay together. And, yeah. Like, um, I had been out of town. Mm-hmm. I was on a, a really awesome trip where I got to go and just be like this little mini like CrossFit celebrity, I guess, um, in the Cook Islands. Amazing. And it was an amazing trip. And he moved our stuff while I was gone. Mm-hmm. And I think just a couple days after um, I got back is when. Uh, my period's always been very regular, very regular. And I've taken pregnancy tests 
in my life, like when there's, it makes no sense. Like it would have been impossible. But like <laughs> if my period was ever like even a day late because it was so regular, I would start to panic. And so I just had some laying around the house. Like I didn't even have to go buy them. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think I was like two days late or something and took it and I couldn't believe it because I had taken so many in my life. Um, paranoid. Mm-hmm. And they have always been negative, you know, like I think a lot of women have that. And then all of a sudden one of them says something different and you're like, wait, what? This has never happened. This isn't how this goes type of thing. Um, but yeah, he was like cleaning. One of the dogs like pooped on the carpet or something mm-hmm. and he was cleaning it and I showed it to him and he just was like, okay. And then he just like went back to cleaning. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't yeah. really register. I was like, yeah. all right. Yeah. And, you know, she was just kind of wanting more of a reaction, of course. Of but, course. You know, and <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, it was just like, an, I don't know. It didn't really, it didn't really hit, yeah. you know, until like she kept questioning me on it. But also at that time, I wasn't really good at kind of focusing on what I was feeling in general. Mm-hmm. So I was just kind of like, great. All right. You know, but during that time, it was a very delicate stage in our relationship. So... You know, once we kind of got to talking about it and everything, you know, it to say that it was an easy pregnancy would that would be a complete lie because not only were we trying to like work on a relationship because it was so new and we were going through the situations that we were going through, we just moved in and then my mom had also moved in with us, mm-hmm. so it put a lot of stress for sure um, on a relationship. But on my end, it definitely gave um, way more motivation to make it work because, like. It was just making me a better person regardless of how hard it was because you just continue to overcome obstacles. And I didn't set myself up in the most best situation with that either because the amount of hormone changes, hormonal changes that she goes through, the amount of sleep that it affects you guys and everything. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't realize how much uh, communication is so important, not only in your regular relationship day to day, but especially when you know, your partner, whether it be a wife or just a partner at that time, you know, it's just so much that goes into the first trimester of pregnancy Mm. that it's just a shock. You're just like, you're going from this person being more rational to irrational because of the lack of sleep and all the hormonal changes that are going on. So if you don't have your communication set or especially if you haven't worked on personal ego, Mm -hmm. that I would say was really hard because you take things personal. You're like, what? But, um, yeah, it was just rough. One of the funniest things I remember that super early on was um, because it was uh, not planned. And I had like, I was 34 mm-hmm. at the time. And I, like most of my adult life anyway, didn't know if I wanted to have kids. We had talked about it like five weeks before this. He was so funny. He was like, oh, we in the next year, I'd like for us to have a kid. Made no mention of us getting married or anything oh, wow. like that. But he was, like, ready to have super a kid chance. in the next year. Wow. Um, which was oh, yeah. super – I was like, that's not – okay. Like, no, that's not how it works for me <laughs> anyway. But um, I was open to having kids with him um, more than I had been in other relationships. Um, but it was funny because I was like, I'm going to gain, like, 30 pounds. And I've been known for, like – the Miranda abs for like a decade now, like Mm -hmm. this is like my identity was like shifting, Mm -hmm. not and hormones and everything. But he was like 30 pounds. He was like, don't babies only weigh like eight pounds. (laughs) He was so confused. Like, why would you gain so much? Yeah. And he called his cousin. Do you remember you called your cousin? You're like, why is she going to gain 30 pounds? And he had to explain to you. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all things like, I just, again, I just, you don't think about really. Yeah. Until you, Actually, you are forced to think about it. So you had, you did want to have kids, like, leading up to this. It was something that you talked about. But in terms of, I don't know, um, like, being prepared for the pregnancy or anything like that, did you, um, was there anything that you were, that you did that you feel like, like when you found out that she was pregnant, like some dads will dive into, I don't know, reading some books or like with your with your mom around. Mm-hmm. Did you start like asking her what? Not what really. I think the focus was to definitely make sure that Miranda was being taken care of. Yeah. Um, because I was on the approach of like, because people will start sharing all these opinions that you really don't ask for. Mm-hmm. And you're like, stop talking to me. Yeah. Um, 
because I'm a very like take on certain things and like learn as you um, the process unfolds because you know I just knew I, I've always had um, a feeling that I was gonna enjoy being a dad like it's just to care for someone like uh, you know like my son or daughter would have been at the time but luckily a boy um, I just knew I was gonna do whatever it took yeah you know like my dad was a very great dad for me and so was my mom so you just learn it's just one of those things where like you can read all you want but it's one of those where you realize experience is going to teach you along the way so. yeah i think like our biggest focus as soon as i mean it's where the focus was anyway but like it had to be like gas on the fire when we found out we were pregnant was like we need to strengthen our relationship because yeah. right now like we're going to end up sharing custody of this kid like the way that it was oh, for sure. type of thing like the best thing that we could do is um, strengthen our relationship more than anything else. That it was a hu- huge focus the yeah. whole time I was pregnant. The first time. Oh yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> recently Jeb said something about like <laughs> the hardest part of all of this. Mm. He said was actually the pregnancy, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Those first like few weeks after she was born were the hardest weeks of my entire life. But I think for him, his perspective was kind of like what you're talking about, that first trimester. And like, he saw me as completely irrational. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I am totally rational. Like, okay. everything's fine. Um, but it wasn't. And I think definitely we had to learn how to communicate. Would you say that there was anything specific in terms of how you focused on your relationship or how you communicated that really helped you guys navigate that? Um, I, For me at the time, I think it was definitely like the willingness to just um, stay no matter how hard things got, right? Um, because my communication wasn't the greatest. Even then, there was so much to be worked on. Um, I knew I had to allow myself to be extremely vulnerable as a man and start sharing my feelings and what I was actually feeling and um, for her peace of mind and especially to overcome the obstacles we were facing at that time. Um, yeah. We went to therapy, though, and it was your idea because we were fighting a lot. Oh, yeah. Like yelling at each other fighting, mm-hmm. and mostly I was yelling and you were just like, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, it was your idea. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like hey, we need like if this is going to work, we've got to get somebody – in between us because we're clearly like not communicating with each other well mm-hmm. yeah and so almost my whole pregnancy with Knox and even afterwards because we used to take him to the appointments um Julian was going by himself I was going by myself and we were going together every week to this therapist in oh, yeah. Orange County um mm-hmm. until we moved here pretty much mm-hmm. some people have tools like okay, if you have, if there's like a a problem or whatever, don't bring it up after 10 p.m. or something like that. Or if just things like that, tools in order to like to communicate in a way that's healthy or like, I guess, effective. Um, Do you, did you guys learn anything like that there? Or is there anything that you guys use? I would say the reality of it is during that time when you're learning how to communicate, it's of course, like you want to apply those things, but that's not reality because you know, say you have something on your mind that's and it's 10 p.m. If, say, the one person's in a better state of mind but the other one has that off on their chest, they're not mm-hmm. going to sleep. And yeah. in turn, what happens? Now it carries over to the next day, which escalates the situation even more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so the biggest thing now is, so, yeah, you would just go through those stages of communicating no matter how long it took. And sometimes I can see now how that was not the greatest, but you don't know. You just want to be there to listen um, to the other person. Um, but yeah, you can only say so much until you get to a point where like, but also it's in your track record as well. Like as say, if I'm going to use men, for example, if you say, usually men just say, I want we'll talk about it later. Mm-hmm. They don't talk about it later. It's right. just mm-hmm. a way for them to brush it off. Um, once you start establishing and that you can say that and actually mean it, yeah. um, you know, because the minute you're arguing with your person your spouse or your partner and you guys are trying to prove each other wrong and it's like a battle of that's egos on both ends because you shouldn't ever have to get to that point and the, the sooner you can realize that and acknowledge that you're better off because hey like you see what we're doing to each other yeah why mm-hmm. are we doing this to each other 
you know, but that takes a lot of like, um, you have to feel safe mm -hmm. and you have to feel like you're being, you know, the other person really means it, yeah. you know, so, um, but yeah, during those times, as much as we would have loved to apply it, it just wasn't realistic, you know, because I knew that if I said that it would make her angry and she's like, well, you know, yeah. it was almost like she felt like I was just trying to shut her up, you know, and that could have done, who knows at the time, you know, just obviously because she had a reason to be angry at me, but um now it, it translate i know we're talking about nox's um pregnancy but in this time around it, i felt like we've been able to get through some pretty difficult moments or like emotional times which has been good yeah i think like um one thing that he has figured out for the second pregnancy along those lines is um i don't know if this is true for like all men but he definitely had where if i was upset about something or if I was exhausted. It, um, he felt like he had to fix it mm -hmm. instead of just like, I just want to say it to say it type of thing. Um, anytime I would complain of like uh, being tired or something hurting or something, um, it was almost like a personal, like he would take it personally. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, uh, and that he needed, that he was responsible for fixing it and it yeah. caused him so much stress as opposed to just trying to like understand how I was feeling. And of course, like that's like a man woman thing for sure yeah. all the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's been way better yeah. this time for sure. I think now and w what I've learned is that you, you don't have to fix it. You just have to listen. Mm -hmm. But I do have a kind of rule personally where if she does say something that's been brought up three times or more, that's when I'm like, hey, listen, like I can't listen no longer because it's been the same thing now. So now I'm going to offer because before what I would do is she would tell me her problem. And then I would try to offer a solution. And if she just didn't listen to my solution, I would get offended. Like, why aren't you okay. listening to what I'm telling you if clearly this will work? Right. But realizing she's her own person and she approaches things differently. Yeah. Um, but now, again, listening and um, if it's been a th conversation that's been up, brought up three times, that's when I'm like, hey, like. You can either keep bringing this up mm -hmm. or maybe Yeah, because at some advice. point, too, like, I don't, you know, I only have so much patience as well because you guys <laughs> all know, the whole team knows. I deal with things very um, a certain way, yeah. and it's like, okay, what are we gonna do about it? Yeah, you know, and we press it. I can't do that with my spouse, you know, because again, <laughs> it's all about listening. So, but I mean, at a certain point, I like I love that that it's like I can get into this place of like I just need to talk it all out, mm -hmm. and I need to go around in circles with it, and then at a certain point, it's like, well, are you just gonna keep talking about it, or are you? Do you want to actually do something about yeah. it? You know, so having that your partner to call you out and be like, "Hey, I think it's time to actually do something." Yeah. And here's an idea. I think it was hard too. I didn't have any f close friends yeah. who had been pregnant before, mm -hmm. like at all, at all. Um, and I didn't even have any close friends that lived in the area that we lived. Like I was very isolated during yeah. that pregnancy, and like um, we barely knew each other like we had just moved in together and before we moved in together we lived an hour and a half away from each other so it's not like we spend a, i mean a, a good amount of time together but it was never like days on end or things like mm -hmm. that um and his mom i barely knew his mom and she's she's kind of harder to get to know at first too. yeah and she was she, going through some morning. of her own personal stuff um so i was like very isolated and I thought that all the craziness was because of the stuff we were going through with our relationship. And I think you did, too, because mm -hmm. you also didn't know a lot about pregnancy. Oh, yeah. I didn't tie it to the pregnancy hormones. Mm -hmm. I tied it to being us having relationship sure. problems. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So with the pregnancy, <laughs> did you already have in mind this um, the idea of going to the birth center? Um or no, was that I something? had never thought about how I would give birth ever a single minute of my life. Okay. I got okay. <laughs> so I've heard your you talk about like your experience with hospitals and how that yes. kind of makes you uncomfortable. So I I totally understand how you got to feeling comfortable at the birth yeah. center. How did you respond oh. to that? Was that something that you were like open to? I feel like a lot of men maybe don't necessarily know what to expect from a birth center or yeah. like a home birth or whatever. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah, I think once we got to the facility, it made me, the more I was able to visualize it, sit down with the doctors, it became more clear that I'm like, it was a more comfortable solution or it's a comfortable thing for me as well. But I also got to a place where I knew that no matter what, like 
she needs to do what she needs to do to be feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing, right? Because if I'm not the one delivering the baby, so if I would have said, no, I don't like the birth center, I want you to have it at the hospital, but then she's not comfortable with the hospital, then what good does that do, right? Mm -hmm. Like, again, I'm not pushing out a human being. So I think that's always been a priority is like, what is it that makes you comfortable? I'll share my opinion, um, but I'll support whatever you needed. I think we sim we both had similar feelings, oh, yeah. at least at the OB that I was going to. Mm -hmm. For because I was 34, like they literally made me think that my baby was gonna yeah. die <laughs> or in my belly or that it was gonna have like a host of all these issues. They wanted to do like all these tests, including like super invasive ones, like the amniotic fluid one for like no reason at all. Yeah. Um, there was like one time I feel like we waited for the doctor for like an hour in the exam room. Like mm -hmm. they forgot we were in there. Oh my gosh. Um, and so like all my like attitude toward doctors and hospitals and the bad experiences that I had had, he could, he was feeling that too. And of course, like not all OBs are like that, but it was definitely the, the experience that we were having together. And it just felt different when we went to go tour the birthing center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you mentioned that at one point you guys were both waiting in the waiting room just because <laughs> I think like for my first mm -hmm. doctor's appointment, I don't remember if Jeb was out of town or not, but I came home and I like told someone I'd gone to my first appointment. And they were like, oh, was Jeb with you? And I was like, no. And they're like, well, what do you mean he's not with you? And I was like, oh, are, are they supposed to come? And then I told him, he's like, am I supposed to be there? And we, we both realized that like, we didn't know how to do that. And was it something that you were like, no, I want to be at all of the appointments or did you have to ask him or like, how did that work for you guys in terms of like how involved you were with all the appointments? I don't remember us ever like specifically talking about it. Um, I think that he could feel how isolated I was probably with like just the whole thing being like overwhelming for me and me not having anyone to talk about it. And I had no support system. I had no family where mm -hmm. we lived um, or anything. And then also just with like, like he said, like he was planning on being a dad and was excited about it. I think you were excited to come. Yeah, I was. I think it just felt natural for me to be there and support and just to be a part of the process. And mm -hmm. honestly, like the thing is, I also understand people like fathers that have, um, you know, nine to five jobs or things that they, but in my situation, like, I had the flexibility. Yeah. I was always, I had my own schedule. So I was like, yeah, yeah absolutely. This is, this, it was a no brainer. I mean, I was just second nature to me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do any like birth classes mm -hmm. or anything like that? How, what do you think was like the most valuable thing that you got from that? In birth class. So there was two that we had to do. We did um, at the birthing center, they require at least the first time moms to go to these classes. And I don't remember how many weeks it was, maybe like six or eight weeks um, of weekly. Like, they were like one hour and they were like how like what the baby's poop's going to look like when it's first born and how to breastfeed and like all of that stuff, which was so helpful because then when. Um, the baby came like we did feel like okay we heard this this is normal like this is normal that's normal like everything's good that was super helpful and then we also had to go to like another class where we ended up getting a, a private session because of scheduling reasons and we mm -hmm. went to this woman's house and she talked about like the actual like day of labor and birth mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was awesome too because things like the transition phase or whatever and like um, we wanted him to be super involved in the actual labor and like be a huge part of it. Cool. Um, because of everything that we were going through in our relationship, like we both wanted to allow this to like connect us and strengthen us mm -hmm. together as opposed to, you know, just being outside in the waiting room or whatever. So we both actively wanted to be involved. And I thought that class was Cool too, even though, do you remember you used to always almost fall asleep during that class? It was late at night. Oh, it was so rough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to bring snacks to keep yourself awake. Uh, oh, yeah. Always snacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, you had the birth center and you also 
had a doula or no? Was it? Yeah, I didn't get the doula because I didn't understand the concept of a doula until like, I mean, I feel like we hired her when I had like eight weeks left. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have her the whole time. And then, of course, like with that that close, it was hard to find somebody. We interviewed two or three, two. Two. And the first one we didn't like, she yeah. seemed like she wouldn't understand us. Like it just didn't feel like somebody that we would have coffee with. So mm-hmm. I can't do this experience with you. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more than coffee. The <laughs> second one was she was awesome, though, and she was all about just like I love how she explained that she, because of what our wishes were for us doing this as a team, that she was just going to be there for him and she was going to tell him what to do and tell him what to say and what not to say and what not to do. And um, she was great. Yeah, she was. Cool. Yeah, I think sometimes there's confusion and you just have to, it all comes down to communication always, but confusion around like, well, what is from the dad's perspective, like what is my role going to be here on the actual day and what is the doula's role and what's the midwife's role and who is supposed to do what and like where am I needed the most? And honestly, I think that you know, the dad has a potential if they want it, because they don't all always want that type of role, but they have the potential to be like the biggest Mm -hmm. part of your support team there. And the doula can help you, you know, and then the midwives are like the medical part of it. Yeah, that's how I like explained it, because actually um, last weekend, uh, my friend Jen, who's never had a baby, was in town. She's like, so what is a doula? Like, what do they do? Because Molly had a doula, too, and she had a hospital birth. Mm -hmm. Um, and the way that I explained it, and you can like correct me if I'm explaining this wrong, but the midwife or the doctor is in charge of keeping the, like they're focused on the baby Mm -hmm. and like making sure everything is good with the baby and the birth. And the doula is taking care of mom more so. And like, not just like physical, like checking your heart rate and stuff like that, but like mom's like physical or psychological and like emotional state during the whole thing because the doctor's not going to ask you especially if you're like at a hospital yeah no they're probably not going to ask you about that yeah um and then just making sure like your wishes and stuff um of what you want or explaining like when the midwife or doctor rushes in and they're like we need to do this this and this like the doula can explain like what that means and like if she thinks it's necessary Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing so did was there anything about the doula like relationship or situation that surprised you? Mm -hmm. Um, No, I think she was great support. She really was. Obviously, um, there's so much unknown. That's why they say like birthing is a miracle. Uh, And you see why. But it was always peace of mind just having her there because she had experienced, you know, that multiple times. So I would be like, is everything okay? In times of like exhaustion, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're just like, oh man, you just pull her side, like, give me an update. Yeah. And she's like, no, it's totally, everything's <laughs> going fine. This is all part of it. And great. That was enough cool. of a, like, a, um, that was just enough to go back in and get a nice little energy boost from it. Yeah. She reassures you so she's that you reassurance. can go in and reassure her. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's fast forward to the day, uh-huh. the birth day itself was where where were you in like in the due date estimated due date I was two days late okay so they had um one of the things that happened during my pregnancy with Knox is toward the end they were concerned because of the fundal height or whatever measurements that he was tiny like Mm. in they were telling us he was going to be super small and they were worried about it and they started kind of like I had I was going to um ultrasounds and like to have stuff checked like twice a week for the last couple maybe three weeks Hmm. they were like he's gonna be tiny or whatever and um they were checking my amniotic fluid to make sure that it wasn't like draining or I don't know how all that works but um yeah so they were kind of scaring me a little bit and then they they had talked me into stopping exercising because they were worried about him being small and me not like eating I don't know but um Oh, the due date came and I hadn't been working out for like a week or like a week and a half or something because they told me not to. And uh, the due date came. And of course, like I think due dates can really mess people up, mm-hmm. especially for your first one, because the next day I was like, 
I thought I was, he was going to be out by now. Like, this is too long. Like, I can't, I, this, that was my cutoff for like patience. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I am now past the point. Yeah. Like, and I think because, um, even working out had been taken away from me. Like there was just nothing about anything that I was doing. I wasn't going to the office where I worked anymore. So you're just like there waiting. My mom's in town waiting. Like, yeah, it was just so much stress. And I told him, I was like, I don't feel like this is right. I feel like my body's in shock because I've been working out five to six days a week for a, two decades. And my body doesn't even know what's happened. Like, I've never taken this long of a break ever. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm almost disrupting homeostasis more yeah. than anything. Wow. And so he's like, just go and work out. Like, you just need to go. And so this was, was, this was when I was two days overdue. And so I went out in the garage <laughs> And I did like some kettlebell swings and I, don't, I know for sure there was kettlebell swings. I don't remember the other movement might've been burpees or something like that. And it was at like eight or nine o'clock at night. I went and worked out. And then um, at 2 a.m. is when I woke up like having contractions that same, like hours later. Okay. Yeah. So you started having contractions. Did you wake him up right away? Um. So I have, I'm like, Funny, when it comes to pain, when I'm in minor pain, I will exaggerate it big time and complain. <laughs> when there's something majorly wrong with me, like yeah. a broken neck or something, <laughs> or my ACL being blown out, I'll be like, no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> so I did wake him up, and I was like, it's like cramping. And he was like, well, what do you, do you think that's what it is? And like I said, like my mom was there and everything, and I didn't want to like wake everyone up and call the doula and everything. So I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it feels like. Like, I don't know. Yep. And so they had told us that if I start potentially having contractions to go for like a walk, mm -hmm. and then if by the time you come back, they don't go away or they're getting closer together or worse. And in the classes, they had taught him how to like time them and everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, by the time we got home from the walk and everything, I think we kind of knew what it was. And we woke your mom and my mom. <laughs> my mom is a whole funny story in herself. But um, we woke them up and everything. And I think you tried to get me to fall back asleep, right? Yeah. Uh, this is where my memory starts to go. <laughs> so, so, like, we, you woke me up first time. And I was like, hey, like, you know, um, we timed it. And it was still, like, a 10, one, I don't know. It was, like, 10 minutes in between contractions and everything. So we attempted to go back to sleep uh, most of me and then in a couple hours we checked it again and mm -hmm. the timing and they were shortening up and then but i think it was when they told us to worry we had like a certain amount of time it was like what two minutes two three know. minutes yeah. in between we're whatever. gonna have to brush up on that <laughs> yeah so it was like uh you know once it become more frequent that's when you're like okay cool so we went on a walk and then that's when she knew like we were downstairs her water broke and i'm like okay it's mm -mm. time to call doula water never broke oh that's right huh I lost my mucus plug. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, cool. So Where? we were on a walk. In the toilet. Oh, it okay. was like 7 a.m. I called the doula. I was like, hey, this is what's going on. She lost a mucus plug. And then she came over. And then by that point, Lito Miranda was definitely, she's like, oh, yeah, this is time. Because she was on a ball. You know, and then the doula got there and was just like timing everything, called the midwife. You know, that's when, I would say that was a very good moment to have the doula. Because like, mm -hmm. that's when you're just like, step back. Pay attention to what's going on just to get the confirmation of like, oh, yeah, it's go time. It's time, yeah. And they're like, okay, give us a call a couple hours if this, you know, this happens. And, yep, she was the one that was like there to support her in, yeah. in that sense. Um, while I kind of got everything else ready, like at the dogs, like my mom, her mom, everything, like making sure we had all our, you know, lunch ready, all our food ready, all the stuff that we had packed beforehand yes. for that day. So we had like a whole, because that's what they tell you, like plan for <clears throat> that day. Yeah. Have a bag. That has you ready so you can just grab it and just kind of go. Um, so once we got all that squared away, we got to the midwife um, location around 10 o'clock. I remember when she got in the car, though, I called Molly and Jen that were in Madison at the time. And I was like, it's, it's time. Oh, my God. And I just, like, showed them the phone. And she was like, oh, God. She was, like, hurting in the back. <laughs> yeah, so my two very best friends were... Um, it was opening day for the CrossFit Games, and they were competing as a team. Mm -hmm. So he calls them, and they were fine. I was fine seeing them, but then, like, the rest of the whole team, yeah, they were there. some of them that I wasn't super close to, oh, were God. like, hey, man. And I was, like, crying <laughs> and, like, hunched over like a pillow. Mm -hmm. And, like, neither of them had, had had a baby before, so they were probably just, like, terrified. Like, oh, what's God. going on? Um, and then my mom, the funny story about my mom, before we get too far away from it, because 
My mom has had six kids, all natural. Her longest labor was like four hours. My mom oh my is God. the most relaxed person like on earth. So I'm like downstairs screaming in pain and like just in so much pain. And we're like getting ready to leave. And I was like, where is my mom? Like she hasn't even checked in on me yet. Like, and he went to go see what she was doing. She was like curling her hair. Oh, like, she was so <laughs> at peace. Makeup and stuff. <laughs> She was like, okay, I'm almost ready. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, where remember. is my own mother right now? I was like, it's time. She's like, I was so irritated. Okay. And she's like so peaceful. And she was just kind of like yeah. taking Man. her time. And I was like, all right, Lori, all right. It was funny. So, okay, but you're saying like you're screaming in pain downstairs or whatever. But like, Julian, from your perspective, like what were you, what were you seeing from the time, let's say, like, when you went on the walk mm -hmm. where she was probably maybe less in pain yeah. or less uncomfortable to go time. Like, how did that look from the outside and what were you thinking um, Well, that? you just don't want to jump the gun either. So you're just kind of like, you know, you have that timing in mind that they talk about in the class. Right. So I was like, okay, like you're watching the water breaking, things like that. You know about the mucus plug coming out. And I kept asking her, like, is there anything? And she's like, no. And then once that happened, I was like, okay, that's, like, the first stage. And even then, then they tell you, like, don't really worry about it. Like, call yeah. in and, you know, they'll ask you questions. But um, <laughs> as the contractions kept hitting her and hitting her, that's when I was like, okay, for sure. And then the doula, I, she would ask me questions. I would tell her, like, this is what's going on. She's yeah. like, okay, I'll head over. And then once that, that's when you knew things were, oh, yeah, it, it was time. So... It was just like a, a, an adrenaline kick. You just want to make sure because people can either freak out or you can be like, all right. I think that is one of the benefits of being like a, a competitive athlete or yeah. even my mindset in general. It's like you just kind of go in the zone. Mm -hmm. You just got to be very present. You know, luckily, obviously, I had the support because if I didn't have the duel, I would have been probably a little bit more panicked because I, I wouldn't have had answers. Yeah. Or most of the times I like to like, if not have answers, just say everything's going to be okay. But just don't really know totally. it's so unknown it was like a first experience yeah right um so yeah i would say it's just things just kind of escalated okay mm -hmm. um so you guys get to the birth center and what happens did they like check you yes so okay. they checked me i was dilated out of four um my water still had not broken um and but the contractions were pretty close together like they were getting yeah, uh, they were, frequent, yeah. yeah, they were frequent and they were strong. Um, so obviously they didn't like, I know some women go to the hospital and they're like, you're not ready yet, go home. They didn't, they didn't say that to me at all. They, I stayed and um, I mean, I feel like it was like you said, like 10, 10 a.m., something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I just remember all I really remember from... 10 a.m. till I'm not sure what time, maybe 2 p.m. was every two minutes or whatever it is, just you feel it coming like this, like, oh, here it like starts out a little weaker and then it like hits the peak part of the contraction mm -hmm. and then it starts to go away, right? But you can feel it coming. You're like, no, 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 I'm not ready. Like, yeah. it's like that roller coaster, like going up the hill where you know it's coming and now it's like, too, there's nothing you can do to stop it. And for, for four hours, it was just that. And he was like holding me up and I was trying to walk around and I was like, I don't remember laying on the bed almost at all. No, that you couldn't stick still like that. You had to keep moving. Mm -hmm. It was about walking, sitting down, going to the bath, coming out of the bath. It was just a lot of movement, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the huge advantages of being at a you know birthing center. Just your movement, like constantly, oh, and gosh, yeah. you know, um, being in the tub, out of the tub, things that make you feel comfortable, sitting on the toilet, off the toilet, you know, not just stuck to a bed because that, I think that made it worse for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and um, my mom was just um, doing a cross stitch, like just sitting there <laughs> sewing, so calm. Oh my god! And mm -hmm. your mom was just like also chilling, but they were both in the room. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, so, but then at, t at 2 PM and I, I didn't know how long we had been there or whatever, but it's, I mean, every minute felt so long, right? At 2 PM, they came, <laughs> they came and checked me and I was still at a four. Oh yeah. That was after hard. four hours of just like feeling Whoa. like I was being murdered, like every two minutes, you oh, know, man. um, and I remember like being 
like a little annoyed, not at them, but at like all the people that are like, oh my gosh, you're so fit. Your birth is going to be so easy. And I was just like, this isn't how it's supposed to be. And I was not exhausted. Like physically, he was right. probably more exhausted than I was because he was holding me up every time I had a contraction. But um, it was just like emotionally draining mm-hmm. and just like, I don't know how much more of this I can handle. So they, yeah, they checked me a couple times during it and I was just four, four, four. And then after four hours, I was still four. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's when I told you, like, I can't, like, I can't do this Well, anymore. yeah, it was hard for you. And then they, they went in and manually got you to a seven, a seven mm-hmm. which, like, really which was. they had to break. I, they, I, they broke my water. My yeah. water still hadn't even broken. Oh, wow. So that was really painful for you, for sure. That was, I like, a thorough moment. threw up all over the place. And, oh, God. <sighs> yeah. Um, and then it was, like, moments after that, for sure, because you still, you know, had the contractions and you were in pain. And you were like, I, I, can't, I don't know if I can do this because they offered um, – Nitro. Nitrous. Nitrous. <laughs> nitro. Uh, nitrous for her. And she was kind of like, I don't know. What do you think? And I was like, honestly, they give you a moment to, they ask you like, hey. You asked everybody to leave. Yeah. And then, so we could talk about it. And I just said like, I think it's okay. Like, mm-hmm. you're going to be fine. You know, I just kept telling her like, at this time today, tomorrow, it'll be done. Oh. You know, like, if yeah. this is very temporary. You know this. Like, you know, we've talked about this before. Just keep imagining like our little baby boy. You'll be holding him by mm-hmm. this time tomorrow. You know, because it's true. A lot of times, you know, time flies like that. Right. You forget. You get so stuck in the moment. I think it's those times where it's okay to, like, jump forward. And yeah. those to have something to reach and look forward to. Oh, God. I feel like that's such a, an awesome thing to say. Oh, yeah. I, I think because it, it was, like, far. It was, um, it was so close yet so far, it felt like, for yeah. her. But it was so reachable, that goal. It was like, okay, I'm, he'll yeah. be here. I'll, you know, and, and people talk about giving purpose to the pain. Oh, well, yeah, like, absolutely. Remember what the purpose is. Yeah, so just giving her a purpose again. And, you know, because, I mean, it's just hard. It's just hard watching, like, your partner be in so much pain. Um, you know, you want to kind of take that burden off of them as, you know, sometimes. And you're like, oh, man. Um, well, they said that the main issue that I was having was um, that relaxing. I just couldn't relax. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where, like, the whole, like, oh, athletes have easy labors thing can be, like, the exact opposite because for so long, like, whenever something challenges me physically, my body is wired to tighten everything up and to work against it. And so um, I think they realized, like, I was – every time there was a contraction, and it's probably why they were so painful, too, um, was because every time a contraction would come, I would, like, tense up my whole – whole body mm-hmm. and I was like basically holding him in there yeah. and not allowing it to progress so they said that the nitrous they're like it's not necessarily going to make it less painful but it's going to allow you to relax through it yeah. more and so yeah I think I mean that's such a good point and I feel like that's kind of maybe one of the biggest things about all of this is understanding that like you can't like fitness your way no. through an easy labor or like you can be prepared I mean I think for sure having the fitness and the stamina and the endurance to like not be completely exhausted when I was interviewing at the birth centers I remember them saying that like the majority of the reasons that they end up transferring to the hospital is because of just fatigue yep mm-hmm. that's what they told us here exhaustion too, yeah. yeah so like You know, obviously your fitness played a role in that, but it doesn't make it less painful. It doesn't prevent, like, some complications. It doesn't make it less, like, emotional. And I think for sure, even that, like, the mindset of, like, needing to control or push your way through Mm -hmm. it, like, yes, you're at a certain point you do have to push, but it's not pushing, like... No. Pushing a sled. (laughs) Just because you're good at that doesn't mean that you're good at pushing a baby out. I think, too, like with the fatigue thing is that I had put myself in situations where I was so physically drained and messed up that, like, I knew what my limit – I know what my limit for fatigue is where most people, like, they've never put themselves in a position to feel that level of tired before. So, like, it's so foreign and scary to people. But, I mean, I – you know, yeah. on near blackout, like so many times <laughs> training before yeah. that, like, yeah, it was never like a physical, it was a pain thing for yeah. sure, but not ever like a, oh, I'm tired and I just can't do this anymore. I feel like that's almost even more frustrating knowing that like, I I can do this yeah. and I'm like, I have the willingness to do it, but 
for whatever reason, it's just not it's just not working. It's just not happening. When they asked ev- when he asked everybody to leave, I was like, I gotta go to the hospital. Like I can't do this. He's like, you don't let these midwife ladies think that you can't do this. He's like, you don't show. You're gonna show them that you can do this. Yep. Do you remember? Yep. So you were like coaching her. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So after the nitrous. Did that like make a shift? Did that change anything, or was it the conversation? Well, I think it was partially because they ma- they broke my water and manually like helped okay, it yeah. move along a little bit, and then the nitrous, and then at the same time that I started getting the nitrous, I also sat on the toilet, and yeah. I got from a seven to a ten in not too much time, too much longer. Okay, mm-hmm. so maybe like. From like two thirty to three thirty, I sat on the toilet and yeah, for sure. hit you're the just, nitrous every time the heart. contraction was coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think at some point they were like, "Don't breathe so deep." Oh yeah, you were really hitting it for sure. <laughs> and I was like, "I can't." I, how you're attracted to me after seeing what I must Ugh. have looked like in that state? I don't even understand. Mm-hmm. But um. I think that's something people ask about a lot too. Like they're worried about their husbands like seeing them like that. I mean, I. Yeah, for sure. Like, I knew ahead of time, like, you're going to possibly poop poop everywhere oh, yeah. or, like, whatever. And there was this, like, the birthing stool that you guys showed in the vlog. Uh-huh. Like, I was totally on this. And that was actually a really comfortable place for me. But I was, like, there were so many people. And I was, like, pooping. And I'm, like, oh, my God, <laughs> Jeff, I'm sorry. Like, oh, yeah, it was this whole thing. And, like, obviously I knew he didn't actually care. Yeah. But... What is it that you are thinking of in that in that moment in that scenario? Like, does it even occur to you? Or are you at, like not really? It like? It's just because like you, at that point you just feel so bad with like what's going on. That's the last thing you're really thinking about, honestly. Yeah. That you just want your partner to be okay and whatever that whatever it takes. Like, you just drown, it, honestly, all that is just like right. It's just so natural. Like, hey, it's all part of the process, you know and. Um, I think that if there's ever someone who does make someone feel weird for that, then that's just kind of like a personal insecurity that individual is probably dealing with, like for making the other person, like the woman, feel that way. Yeah. Um, because even that was one of her biggest fears. But even think about it now, like it doesn't change. It didn't change anything of how I looked at her at right. all, even post or during or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. yeah. And we know that in the moment. Like, we know that it's, like, just natural. And I definitely wasn't worried about what he thought of me in the moment. It was more, like, before and after that I was worried about it. In the mm-hmm. moment, I was, like, I couldn't have cared less what he thought about me for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you get to a 10. You've been on the toilet. Yes. You're hitting the nitrous hard. You get to a 10, and then... I remember telling them, like, my body's pushing, like... Because okay. they were like, don't push yet, don't push yet, you know? And then I was like, I'm not doing it. Like, my body is pushing. And they were yeah. like, okay. Then they checked me and said, oh, you're a 10. Like, you can do this. So there, they um, they were certified to, to allow me to have the baby in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. Um, here, they have the bathtubs in the birthing suites, but they are not certified to actually let me deliver here, which I'm kind of bummed about for this one. Mm-hmm. But there, that was the plan the whole time was to have him in the water. So... We got, um, I got in the bathtub and honestly, I don't remember the pushing being bad. I don't. I don't know. You're like, what? Because <laughs> I know your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I don't, like, I was finally in control mm-hmm. and it was something that I could actively participate in and like aid. And so I don't remember the, pu- I remember the contractions coming and me not being able to do anything to make them like more or less painful. That loss of control was the hard part as soon as they were like push as hard as you want i was i don't remember it being bad at all yeah Yeah. i mean i hear a lot of people say that that it's like you finally get to do something that feels like you're finally making progress um like the finish line yeah Yeah. you can see the finish line yeah so i think the pushing part was more terrifying for you than it was for me because in not really was, you no. kept getting in and out. Remember, you're being it all weird about like, it. Yeah, I got weird of like because I had <laughs> said I was gonna help catch the baby, but then there was a moment where I low key panicked. And yeah. I was like, oh, no way. I'm just gonna sit next to you. But they're like, oh, we actually need you in the water because you need to support her because she was sliding yeah. on the toilet. Like you need to support her. And I was like, okay. 
So yeah. Were you were you panicked like about Miranda or panicked about the baby? Just catch, just catching okay. or like yeah. you know because yeah. you're like oh my I don't know you just, again you don't know what any of that feels like totally. or anything and um but yeah. So were you like super vocal? Or was it like oh a, yeah? She was loud. I was really loud. Yeah. The whole, I mean the whole time we were there I was really loud. And it's funny because they had I think they had like a class going on. Uh, hey, that's their <laughs> issue. That they know what they're getting into with these things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, they kind of wanted to. Her take more a little bit more control, like hey, like focus. In it was just weird to hear. I don't know. It just. Oh yeah, I think they told me at one point too. Like, hey, we know that you really like making these sounds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, I was like, I can't be the first person to be screaming (laughs) while I'm pushing. Like, yeah, I think that they wanted me to just use that energy and channel it into exactly. I think so too. Instead of like letting it out, like to bring it Uh, down. Okay. But I I knew that. I felt that, but um, it wasn't more worried about other people because I mean how could they tell you to like it was to channel that energy into yeah yeah Yeah. at any other point did you feel like afraid um was there any like fear beyond just that little moment of panic about like catching the baby was there any other point where you were like afraid um there was like a moment when he actually came out um you could tell that they kind of took like Steps like okay, Miranda, stand up because he didn't breathe. Uh, it, it wasn't until like almost two close minutes, to two, like close to three minutes. So they were like, you know, put him on the on, on the side of the bath, and then they had the pump on his mouth, and they pumped him with air and like mm-hmm. turning him, and they were patting him. So it was just kind of like you didn't hear him. Like so, you're and all that you're just kind of like it's you can't like really celebrate yet. Yeah, because you're like you're holding yeah. your breath too you're like okay what's going on like how come but you but the peace of mind with the classes that was really special obviously because the whole time they're monitoring his heart rate as he's coming out even when you can see the crowning happening all that stuff and so he's okay he's like, okay his heart's beating and everything and so when he came out even though he wasn't breathing the fact that he was still connected to the cord as opposed to being instantly cut right that made like i knew at that point okay that's his life source so he's still okay yeah um but you were just waiting for him to, to breathe. That was yeah. Well, and like if you've never seen a brand, like a literally just came out newborn baby, they're kind of like a weird color they're blue. anyway, yeah. and so oh, they yeah. don't look like pink and like what they look like. No, in they're little like alien TV shows and stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that could be scary. But they did prep us really good in those classes, especially the cord thing. Like knowing that, like, hey, while the cord's still attached, like that's how he's getting oxygen and all that stuff anyway mm-hmm. until he takes his first breath. So, um, yeah. So. In the, like, just those last few, like, the pushing, is there anything else that you, I don't know, feel like you remember or anything that stands out to you from that time for either one of you and that, like, the final push? Um, I remember they told me to, like, feel his head, which was weird, but I definitely did it. I don't think I wanted to, like, see it so much because they kept telling me to try to look for it. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I was more thrown by him getting in and out and like I could see on his face that he was like nervous about it. And I was like, where are you going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just felt like, yeah, as soon as I started to push, I felt m- more in control and it didn't, it wasn't long. It was like 45 minutes mm-hmm. of pushing, um, but it didn't feel super long or anything like that. And then of course, when they're like, you literally need like two more pushes, like that's just, such a relief to hear Mm -hmm. and then when he came out and he wasn't breathing um it's so weird because i was like obviously like physically in pain and stuff like that but they're like miranda stand up because they needed my cord was too short for how i was sitting to like put him on the side of the bath so i had to like stand up and walk over um and he was really worried but for some reason i was like no he's fine like he's like i wasn't i don't remember feeling worried for him yeah yeah uh, and where were the moms at this point? They were there. They were they watching. Were okay. Yeah, they were there. So Benny, our photographer, mm-hmm. when I finally started pushing, he wasn't there. Like, mm-hmm. he had been there, and we told him to leave several times because I was just like, I don't need Benny in here right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you guys know Benny, you know. Okay. Um, but finally, when he was, like, about to come out, we were like, where's Benny? And he was gone. <laughs> he had, like, gone to go get some food. Um, but he came back in time. Okay. Right? Did he? Uh, yes. Not for that. No, part. we had phone pictures only. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Because we lost we lost Benny, but oh, uh, man. Yeah, and then I mean the craziest thing uh, that happened was 
literally because I was just um, had so much adrenaline and whatever else. Like 30 minutes later, I was like, let's go to Chipotle. Like, this is awesome. Like, let's <laughs> like I was fine. Yeah. Completely fine. Yeah. Um, and so we left the birthing center like two hours after Knox was born. What? Yeah, it was a little rushed. But I felt fine until I was getting into the car. Like, for something happened, like, within the five minutes before we were about to leave. And then, like, as we were going, like, we were taking the group photo is when I started feeling, like, kind of. Post-adrenaline. Not yeah, good. It started down. coming down. <laughs> and then I literally, for the next, like, the car ride home and then for the next however many hours until they could finally get me to go to sleep. Um, I was like, this is how the the pilgrim women died on the planes. Like, <laughs> like he's going to be a single dad because I'm going to die right now. Like, I was messed up. And, wow. Like, to the point where even my super chill mom and his mom were like, maybe we should take her to the hospital. Like, she's not okay. Where? What do you mean messed up? Like, what was not okay? Like, I was, like, she had shaking. A fever. She was shaking. And, like, it, was, it was definitely, like, post-adrenaline, like, yeah. it hit her. Uh -huh. uh, she was just like had chills, aches, everything. I don't, she was yeah. in pain. Um, I don't remember Knox the first like eight hours that we were home. I have no idea where he was. Yeah. I know they brought him to like feed with me a couple times. I don't know where he slept that night. Like yeah. I was like gone. Mm -hmm. Did you um, eat anything during like before the Chipotle? Oh, well, we should definitely, the, your, the listeners will love this. Um, yes, I had a progenix <laughs> smoothie <laughs> with a little chunk of my placenta in it. Oh, God. At the birthing center. Okay. Which I know to, like, 90% yeah. of the population is, like, that is <laughs> crazy. Yeah. But we had learned about, like, placenta encapsulation and, like, how you can put some of it. I think it was our doula that told us about all this. Um, so they put my mom. I'm really surprised my mom went for it because she's very traditional. But, like, they, are, my mom and his mom went and they made, like, a smoothie with, like, lots of, like, Almond butter and just yogurt and fruit and progenix protein powder and a piece of my placenta. <laughs> and that's what I had. Okay, we'll have to get their recipe sometime. Oh, we're going to do it again. <laughs> okay. But um, they took photos so that we could send them to progenix, remember? Oh, my God. They yeah. never posted those. You mean those. they didn't, didn't no. use that for their advertising Kinda campaign? Like a commercial. Yeah. 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 Um, but like before that, were you like, did you eat anything during? He the... was like feeding me trail mix and stuff, okay. but I could, I was like super pumped about Chipotle and then I couldn't even eat by the time we got home. I was like all messed up. Right. Yeah. The thing that's when I was grateful that I started knowing a little bit more about how to eat a little bit better because yeah. honey sticks, um, you can take nuts in the early stages, um, or like gummy snacks sugar you need yeah. sugar yeah that's it so yeah. things uh -huh. like that i would be now kind of readjust what i the approach i would probably do less nuts and i would probably do more like berries and and uh things that are easier for you to chew too so it's mm -hmm. like less energy um what were like you feeding me packs. when we got home though uh when you got home i think you, you kind of went back to normal yeah i was eating i was like munching on the stuff that he's talking about throughout Throughout That's the, what she's asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. for the labor. Yeah, we actually used, the, we made like a coconut um, build as well. Like we had coconut water, cool. a lot of coconut water, and then uh -huh. we used build progenix <laughs> carbs yeah. again for that. But I would say, yeah, that was the biggest thing, just to have like easy chewable gummy tablets or honey sticks. Um, yeah, that'll get her through. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so then like just the moment of meeting Knox and mm -hmm. like is there anything there that um what do you remember of that like you guys actually being a family together for the first time you probably remember it better than I do I I've said this before and like we've talked about it even with this pregnancy like I felt like I've known Knox for nine months like we've been together yeah every second of every day this whole time so like it was just holding him in a different way for me. The only thing, the only like standout thought that I had was, oh my god, like this is a white baby. Like <laughs> I was convinced he was gonna look super Mexican, and I was like <laughs> awkward. Like, mm -hmm. um, but I felt like I knew him. He was just now outside, and yeah. of course, like he was beautiful, and he was. I mean, he was not big by any means. He was six pounds, 14 ounces. But the way that they had terrified me leading up to it, that he was going to be like a five pound baby. I yeah. was like, he's totally fine. Yeah. Um, and 
Yeah, but you definitely like there. You can see in the photos of you looking at him that you had like a lot going on. Oh yeah, it was just great to be like, you know, put my finger there and him holding it. It was just special moments for sure. It was a very frozen in time moment for sure. Like, it's, it was a breath of fresh air. Like, nothing else mattered. Yeah, he's there. You get to hold. You know, you get to touch him and give him little snuggle kisses and things like that. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. And no, everything was fine. I think too, like that. Day for me, the the like, it, just the pain and the like. I don't think I can do this and the like, um, him supporting me and us like being such a team. I don't really remember getting much support almost from anyone else the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember really talking to anyone else or anything. And then finally, I you know, there's some really cool photos of us laying in the bed together afterwards with Knox. Um, it was like a physical 24-hour representation of what the last nine months of our life had been. Like, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. amazing. Um, I guess, oh, just like in terms of, I think sometimes it's difficult for men or the partner, the non-pregnant partner, to connect with the baby before the baby actually arrives. Yeah. Did you feel that at all during the pregnancy? For sure. Even, yeah. even with the baby B right now, like, yeah. it's, I, I know, I know not to take it so personal, because, okay. like, throughout the journey, you're, you're, I feel like it's about taking care of her, because mm-hmm. she's the one taking care of baby. Yeah. So, now I know, like, my time will come, for sure. And even, like, when baby was born, like, I, you can be there for support, but you're still there to take care of your partner. It won't, it, it's not until, like, they kind of, like, start seeing and become more uh, comfortable with you um, that they're not so dependent on mom for, like, the, you know, they're still attached. It's yeah. not until, like, the nine-month mark where they realize they're finally two separate people. Mm-hmm. So when you kind of start realizing that and you kind of plug that in, you're like, okay, don't take this personal. Like, it's just a development yeah. of, you know, because it took nine months for mom and baby to attach. And, I mean, think about it that way it's gonna take that month that much time for, to feel a strong bond but the minute Knox was here I I was e- immediately connected I was like this, my job is to protect yeah protect. totally for sure that's awesome and you and your mom were just like oh my gosh he has blue eyes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that you guys were so into it yeah I mean his eyes are amazing yeah. um okay is there anything that you would want to share let's say with a f- First time parents, people that are going into, I mean, you know that there's a lot of women, a lot of the street parking moms are like going into this around the same time as you are. Um, is there anything that you would like leave them or suggest to them in terms of how to go through this as partners um, or what to expect or as a dad, like, you know, what's worked for you, anything like that? I would say that um, not to try to fit into any one story because I've talked to a lot of moms who are like, I don't want my husband anywhere near me during yeah. this. Yeah. And so to like, if that's not how you guys are together, or if you know that you have a hard time, like we work together every day too. Like mm-hmm. we, we know that we're good at um, being a team. If that's not like your relationship and that's not, if you, there's somebody else that you feel like you could get better support from, not better, but like maybe you feel like knows you better or can communicate with you better. Like don't feel like you should fit into the way that we did it because then you're just going to be irritated at each other or frustrated or whatever. I don't think that the way that we did it is like the right way or the only way for sure. Yeah, It just is what worked for us and what we needed as a family at the time. But um, yeah. Yeah, just figure out what the best way to support your partner is, for sure, and identify it, and then go that route for sure. Um, yeah, that's it. I know with the second baby, we plan on uh, depending on the time of day, we really want Knox to be there. And I've talked to other moms that are like, I would never want my other kid to be like there. That would stress me out. Um, so it's just, I mean. Yeah, you just got to figure out for you, like, what's going to allow you. And we've already talked about if Knox is being cranky or or he's bored or he's, you know, making a mess or whatever, then then he's got to go. Like, because that that would stress me out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I think that having a birth plan sounds nice, but mm-hmm. it's not. 
just, just so unpredictable. Just, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, and I think that then it's unfortunate because you get like so attached to this idea of how it's going to go, and it's probably not going to go that way. No, and then not. feeling like any kind of disappointment that like you did it wrong. Like it's not, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just yeah. how it goes, you know? Yeah. Um, is there anything, what are you, how are you guys feeling now? And is there anything that you're looking forward to? I mean, obviously besides meeting baby B, but um, with your second second birth, second birth experience? I mean, I've shared pretty, <clears throat> a few times that I'm like way more, scared about the day of the labor because I know what it feels like now. Like the first time you're like, you believe all the like, oh, you're super fit. It's going to be easy for you. And my mom with these four hour labors and stuff like that, like um, it's it's definitely like I'm more scared this time because it's like, I don't, oh my gosh, like I have to do that again. Like I, you, I t- the very first time I spoke to you on the phone after you had Callie, I was already pregnant, but like pretty newly-ish pregnant. And you were like, Miranda, why are you doing that again? <laughs> and I was like, so Carolina, sorry. don't sit. It's too I'm late. So sorry. Yeah. That was the very yeah. first thing you said to me. <laughs> I was like, how could anyone go through this again? And at the time, it was funny. But now, like, as it gets closer, I'm like, oh, God, I do but have to do this again. To be fair, I'm already like, well, I could probably like do that again. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm excited just because of, like, you know, it is a very memorable moment uh, in someone's life, for sure, to be able to be there through that process and just to get to meet our second baby boy and then for him to meet not. Like, those are all connections that I'm just really excited about um, because you, we always have wonders like, oh, how am I going to love second baby as much as I love <laughs> number one? Like, how is that possible? So just um, letting the process happen. For sure. I'm know. so excited that. to see yeah. Knox's reaction. Like yeah. whether it's like pure anger, igno- <laughs> if he ignores him or if he's excited, like I'm yeah. just so excited to see like I was telling them there's like this show on Netflix right now that's called like Blind Love. I have not watched it, but apparently you like fall in love with someone without ever seeing them and then when they meet for the first time it's just really awkward like a blind date. And I'm like I feel like Knox and baby B are just going to be like looking at each other like this is really awkward right now. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we're in it. Like you guys, the they're partners moment. for like, life. Here we are. Yeah. What are we going to do? You yeah. know. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I think that that about wraps it up. Um. I can't wait to to meet baby B, and I can't and wait to do this again. And if my doula doesn't show up on time, you're in charge. I know. We'll call her, <laughs> and then I'll be the interim doula. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, and we'll do this again with Baby B. Um, but you guys, you guys are just so awesome. You guys are such wonderful parents. Um, you know, one of, I think when we first Jeb and I moved here, uh, <laughs> coming over to the house and like just seeing Holy in the way that you were with Callie, I was like, oh man, I'm so glad we're like in this place where we get to learn from you as a like as a dad and from you as a mom. You guys as parents, as individuals, as a couple. Um, it's it's amazing. So thank you guys for sharing your sure. story. Appreciate that. Thank you for yeah. having us on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.